is my special honor to welcome to the Joy of Music today, world-renowned harpist Suzanne McDonald, former opera singer Jane Stewart Smith, and author Betty Carlson. Both Miss Smith and Miss Carlson have authored many books over the years about their life at La Brie, about music, and now about women hymn writers. We were able to sit down and discuss the wonderful text of these hymns. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome to the Joy of Music today three dear friends who are going to share in this program of favorite women hymn writers. Suzanne McDonald, who plays the harp so beautifully, and Jane Stewart Smith, who is a former opera singer and who now lives and works here in the community of La Brie, and my dear friend Betty Carlson, who is an author and writer and has written many books about the Christian faith and about life here in La Brie. And I want to welcome you all to the joy of music. You know, uh, you've written so many books for us, uh, The Gift of Music, uh, From the Mountains of La Brie, and I could just go on and on naming the wonderful books that you have given to us to read. The book that you have written that has inspired this program is your latest book, Favorite Women Hymn Writers. It truly is inspirational. Betty? Why did you decide to write this book? I'll tell you that I've been singing. I can't sing, but you know, I do sing hymns in churches and all that. And I never thought much about who, who wrote words. And then I guess maybe Jane might have put the idea in my head or something. And then we started looking into the lives of some of these people who had written these hymns. And we were so amazed how nearly every one of the hymns came out of some hardship, some difficult situation. And that, I don't know, that was, I thought that, that needs to be written down, that to be used to encourage other people. And I'm sure Jane, too, is a singer that you've always loved hymns. Yes, hymns have been an interest all my life, even as a little child. My mother was a wonderful singer and used to sing in the choir, and so I just grew up loving wonderful hymns and wanting to know more about them. I think Jesus Loves Me, you know, that you've written about is probably one of the favorite hymns of, from childhood on up because it has such a simple message. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a great hymn. You know, we are in this work of library fellowship and Dr. Schaefer, that was his favorite hymn. And it is so straightforward. And if people just remember that the Lord does love us and Jesus is our Savior as we trust in him. 
Can you tell us something about the, the woman that wrote this hymn? Yes, Anna Warner wrote this hymn. It's a wonderful story. She was a very, uh, there were two sisters and they lived near West Point actually. And to make a living, they started writing and her sister was very well known. But the one hymn that has lasted is Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. And when uh, they died, they left their, they had a, a Bible class for West Point for 50 That's years. Right. And when they died, they left their home to West Point, which is now a museum. Mm -hmm. And certainly this hymn, Jesus Loves Me, has, has stayed with us all through the years and is a favorite. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. When you speak of being simple, you know, you think of children and, and, and the Lord said, you know, unless you come to me as a little child, then uh, you can't really come and enter into my kingdom. Well, you think of the beautiful hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father. Lena Sandell. Well, she's one of, another one of our favorites. She was Swedish, as you probably know. And she was very devoted to her family and homeschooled like many children in those days and particularly loved her father. And they were on a trip going across the ocean, um, and her father was swept overboard and died in front of her eyes. And it took her years to get over that. But as a result, one of the hymns she wrote was Children of the Heavenly Father. But she went on to be a very fine hymn writer and is very widely known. And when the Swedes, Bettys, all her grandparents came to America from Sweden, and what they brought with them in particular was children of the Heavenly Father.
Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. It seems that so many of these women hymn writers wrote experiential hymns, uh, something that they had experienced in their own lives or problems that they were having. And uh, have thine own way, Lord, I think speaks about uh, so often us wanting to have our own way, but uh, perhaps God knows best. And I know, Suzanne, this is one of your favorite hymns. Yes, it is. Uh, I think, as all of us, I've experienced discouragements or disappointments in my personal life or in my professional life. And I've come to realize that at the time, no matter how much I may question, why is this happening to me? How can this uh, take place? Uh, later, with some perspective, I realized God had a wonderful plan in it all along. And it has been very relaxing for me to realize just have his own way. Let, let the Lord have his own way in my life. And to relax and to trust uh, in that perfect way. Because the Lord knows uh, what's ahead of us, and we don't. He knows the behind, and He knows all of our way. It, was there a specific uh, a yes. story of this yes, hymn? Yes, absolutely. Adelaide Pollard wrote this hymn, but she was in a prayer meeting, and she had wanted very much to go to Africa, and she couldn't raise the, 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 the money necessary to go, and she was very depressed, and she went to this prayer meeting and was very discouraged. And then suddenly, these wonderful words just came to her. And later, the Lord allowed her to go to Africa after all. Charlotte Elliott was born near Brighton, England, and lived in a very cultured family. At one point in her life, when she became very sad and discouraged, she went to a friend and told him that she wanted to know God, but she didn't know how. The friend told her, Charlotte, come just as you are to God. And these were the words that inspired her to write, just as I am, 
without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I believe I heard you say once that this is the book that you loved writing the most, Betty. Is that true? And why, the favorite hymn writers? Well, because, as I say, I hadn't thought much about who, who writes these hymns. And then when we, Jane and I worked it out together, we got into their lives, and it was such an encouragement to us. And that, now I've been writing for quite a few years, and I believe, you know, after a while you sort of decide, what, why are you writing? Well, one of the reasons I write is to encourage people because I believe I, I need encouragement. So I need that a, was a question I was going to ask yeah. you. Why do you write yeah. these books? To encourage people. Mm -hmm. And I get enough letters, we get enough letters to know that it's working. <laughs> and that's right. all I need. I don't mm -hmm. have to have thousands of letters or anything. So and to, in, encouragement is a great thing in this, in this age. Who would you say is, is one of the most popular hymn writers or wrote the most hymns? Well, I would say Fanny Crosby is certainly uh, one of the most prolific of American women hymn writers. And uh, I don't know if you know her story, but, but certainly it is one that should be known by all people, is that when she was a little baby, her, um, she got the wrong medicine and um, she uh, became blind. And her grandmother said, I will be her eyes. And her grandmother helped her to memorize much of Scripture. And you know, in the last part of her life, uh, she, and she became happier and happier. She went through depressions too. But in the last part of her life, she lived to be in her 90s. She, someone said to her, you know, I'm so sorry. Wouldn't you, I'm so sorry about your being blind. And she says, you know, if I were, uh, had my choice, I would be born blind again because the first person I would see and will see is the Lord Jesus, my Savior.
I know the hymn, Near My God to Thee, has, uh, I don't know much about the author, but, but you know, it was the hymn that they sang uh, or played on the Titanic when it was sinking, is Absol it not? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Can you tell yes. us something, Jane, about the author that wrote well, that? Well, Sarah Adams, again, a person who had not very good health um, and wanted to go into the theater, but it just didn't work out. But uh, she, this was her hymn, and when McKinley, you know, one of our presidents was assassinated, uh, that was the thing that he wanted to hear when he was dying. I want to hear, nearer my God to thee. And yes, it was played when the Titanic was sinking, exactly. So I love that wonderful hymn and Sarah Adams. Thank you for joining us today on The Joy of Music as we have brought you favorite women hymn writers with my special guests, Jane Stewart-Smith, Betty Carlson, and renowned harpist, Suzanne McDonald. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. <laughs>